Welcome to our tutorial, How to Perform Mapping Calculations with Standard Mapping and Standard Mapping with Reflections. This video gives an overview of the two calculation methods, how they work, and a description of the settings that can be selected. The basic assumptions for both calculation methods are the general assumptions for statistic acoustic calculations according to airing. These include that the absorption resulting from the surface materials used is evenly distributed within a room, as well as that rooms are evenly shaped with mainly diffuse reflections so that a diffuse field assumption can be made. For the standard mapping functions, the reverberation component is purely statistical, which means that the actual location of the absorption in the room is not taken into account and loudspeaker directivity is ignored. The reverberation time, according to Ehring, can be viewed graphically and in tabular form in the Acoustic Parameters window of the Ease 5 main program. To access the mapping functions, go to the Calculations menu item and click on Room Mapping under Simulations. A second Ease 5 window opens. There, under the menu item Mapping, calculations can be started using either Standard Mapping and Standard Mapping with Reflections. The standard mapping can be used to determine all listed measures, including total SPL, STI, clarity and definition measures, and the signal-to-noise ratio. With standard mapping, the direct sound and the statistical reverberation are analyzed. The reverberation onset time has to be computed for the statistical reverberation. The reverberant field is assumed to have built up at this time and is included in the calculations accordingly. The reverberation onset time depends on the room volume and is typically between 20 and 50 milliseconds. It can be slightly later than the so-called diffuse time of 80 milliseconds, but not more than 105 milliseconds. All the parameters required for the calculation can be set in the calculation parameter window. To start with, all loudspeakers that are to be included in the calculation must be selected in the Settings tab. If all loudspeakers are to be used, they can be activated by right-clicking on the OK button. The patch size defines the spatial resolution for the mapping. The higher the resolution selected, the longer the calculations will take, but the more detailed the results will be. You should therefore consider whether you want to use a very fine resolution, such as 0.5 meter, or whether a lower resolution, such as 3 or 5 meter, is sufficient for larger areas. To speed up the calculation process, you can either select a single quantity and create a mapping for it only, or all available quantities. All measures can be simulated and mapped on audience areas, faces, or listener seats. Please select all checkboxes for the types of room elements you wish to use, as well as all specific audience areas, faces, or listener seats you wish to receive results for. The ambient noise level defined in the Acoustic Parameters tab in the Ease 5 main window is reflected in this noise tab and can be adjusted again if necessary. Shadowing can be turned on or off. When shadowing is on, Ease takes into account the shadowing effect of any objects in the room, such as walls, columns, and balconies. Since simulations run without shadowing can be misleading if there are obstructions in the room, many users always automatically turn shadowing on. However, when the shadowing is on, calculations will take slightly longer. For the direct sound, the contributions of loudspeakers in the room can be summed using the power sum method, the default method if the loudspeakers are relatively far apart and rather incoherent, or using complex summation when cancellations have to be expected because loudspeakers are close to each other and relatively coherent. If interference sum is on, the complex summation method will be applied. The potential energy will include the potential energy based on the pressure and thus compute the complex sound pressure sum when checked. When kinetic energy is enabled, 
The kinetic energy is considered by calculating the vector sum over the velocity vector components of the incident sound waves, in example, their directions. When none of both is active, the complex summation will be calculated in the conventional way, that is, by taking two times the pressure, assuming that the pressure part equals the velocity part. The one-third octave setting can be chosen to calculate the average over the respective one-third octave band. The sinusoidal-only setting will instead consider only the center frequency of the band. In the latter case, cancellation effects will be more pronounced. We recommend using the one-third octave setting if not specified differently. The interference sum option should be used only to simulate wave effects such as comb filters and cancellations of close, coherent sound sources. This means that this method should be used only for specific investigations. In general, the use of the setting only affects the direct sound. All other measures are not affected. The split time setting is used for determining the level L split and the clarity C split results for a user-defined cutoff time, in addition to the standard values of 7, 50, and 80 milliseconds. The calculation parameters can now be confirmed and the calculation started by clicking the OK button. The calculation time varies depending on the number of active loudspeakers, on how many audience areas, listener seats, and faces you have selected for the mapping, and on how large the resolution was selected for the patch size. Once the calculation is complete, the calculation results window opens with all the parameters calculated. The quantity of interest can be selected from the drop-down menu. To view the newly selected quantity in the project, click the Render Map button. All results can also be displayed graphically, in tabular form or in combination, depending on the position. In addition, for example, average values or extreme values can be calculated across all positions. All graphics and tables can be exported directly via Send Picture To or Send Values To. The bandwidth and the frequency for mappings and other result views can be set in the dropdowns. All parameters used for the calculation can be viewed in the file info. When saving the calculation results, this information is always stored so that it can be reproduced at any time. The Distribution tab provides statistical analysis results for the selected mapping. The Cumulative Distribution switch calculates the cumulated values for the distribution function. For mappings where higher result values are generally better, such as SPL and STI, the summation is conducted from higher values towards lower values. This allows determining, for example, which minimum level or mean value can be guaranteed for the top 90% of the audience. For mappings where lower result values are better, the summation is performed from lower values towards higher values. For some kinds of mappings, the cumulative distribution is not available, such as the arrival time. The STI optimizer is located in the Options tab. Firstly, the version of the standard can be selected. We naturally recommend always using the latest version. In this version, only a male speaker is used, so this should be selected under STI weighting. As noise and spectral masking are mandatory for the latest version of the standard, we recommend turning both options on for a realistic and standard compliant estimation of the STI. The ideal setting for the signal can then be determined under STI optimization in order to achieve the best possible STI. Results can be viewed not only in the selected patch grid, but also as an isoline plot with and without outlines. This mapping option can be found in the Die menu. 
The standard mapping with reflections calculation method works very similar to standard mapping. However, it additionally includes early reflections based on a ray tracing model. In rooms where the reverberant field can be considered still as diffuse and statistical, but where some first and second order reflections are expected to be strong and should be included, this calculation is useful. It is a good tool for better modeling of early reflections and determining the beneficial effect of lateral reflections compared to a purely statistically based simulation. It is particularly effective for smaller rooms. In standard mapping with reflections, the statistical reverberation component is used, but unlike standard mapping, only from the diffuse time onwards. The energy that arrives as part of the reverberation component between the reverberation onset time and the diffuse time is modeled by discrete reflections instead of statistically based reverberation. Discrete reflections found after the diffuse time are ignored. The reference time for the time window up to the diffuse time of 80 milliseconds and for the reverberation onset time is given by the first loudspeaker perceived. The initial calculation parameters window is the same as for standard mapping. After confirming these settings, another window allows determining the ray tracing parameters. The default settings of 1,000 rays per loudspeaker and third-order reflections are fine to provide a quick snapshot of what's happening at the chosen location. More rays may be needed for a detailed investigation. Since only early reflections are relevant for the considered time period, higher reflection orders will typically not provide additionally information. In fact, in medium-sized rooms, a cutoff order of one or two may often already suffice. The ray tracing simulation is stochastic. That means that results may change from run to run. If the differences are significant, it is typically an indicator that the number of rays is too low or that the cutoff limits are too high. The density of rays must be high enough compared to the covered propagation time in order to sample the room's geometry sufficiently in a stable manner. Notice that in contrast to standard mapping, this simulation makes direct use of the acoustic materials assigned to the faces of the room. Merely a measured or predetermined reverberation time is insufficient to use this method. All taps in the View Calculations window are then identical to the standard mapping procedure once the simulation is complete. The higher the number of rays selected, the more precise the results will be. The number of rays should be increased until two subsequent calculations give very similar results and your calculation times are not too long to be practical. For this reason, in some cases, it can be helpful to use only listener seats and not audience areas so that there are not too many calculation points. For complex room shapes, complex acoustic situations, or fast multi-threaded simulations, we recommend running calculations with the Advanced Aura Ray Tracing module. It makes no statistical assumptions and always calculates an accurate, full-length impulse response, including all reflections as well as scattering effects. In a direct comparison between the two calculation methods, standard mapping and standard mapping with reflections, differences in the room acoustic results can be seen for the same basic calculation settings. These differences can vary depending on the parameters selected for ray tracing and different room geometries. For further information and assistance, please visit our LearnEase 5 page or contact us using the contact form on our website.